Is all our company here? You were best to call them generally, man by man, according to the script. Here is the scroll of every man's name, which is thought fit through all Athens to play in our interlude before the Duke and the Duchess on his wedding day at night. First, good Peter Quinn, say what the play treats on. Then read the names of the actors and so grow to a point. Marry, our play is the most lamentable comedy and most cruel death of Pyramus and Disney. A very good piece of work, I assure you, and a merry. Now, good Peter Quince, call forth your actors by the scroll. Masters, spread yourselves. <laughs> Answer as I call you. Nick Bottom, the weaver. Ready, name what part I am for and proceed. You, Nick Bottom, are set down for Pyramus. What is Pyramus? A lover or a tyrant? A lover that kills himself most gallant for love. That will ask some tears in the true performing of it. If I do it, let the audience look to their eyes. I will move storms, I will condole in some measure. To the rest, yet my chief humour is for a tyrant. Now, name the rest of the players. This is Ercles Vane, a tyrant's vein. A lover is more condoling. Francis Flute, the bellows mender. Here, Peter Prince. You, Flute, shall take Thisbe on you. What is Thisbe? A wandering knight? She is the woman that Pyramus must love. Ah, oh, no faith. I better not play a woman. I've got a beard coming. That's all one. You should play the knight and may speak as a small little bit. And I may hide my face. Let me play this be too. I'll speak in a monstrous little voice. Thins me, thins me. Ah, Pyramus, my lover dear, they thins me dear. And lady dear. No, no, you must play Pyramus. And flute, you thins me. Well, proceed. Robin Starling, the tailor. Here, Peter Quince. Robin Starling, you must play Thisby's mother. Tom Snout, the tinker. Here, Peter Quince. <laughs> you, Pyramus's father. Myself, Thisby's father. Snug, the joiner. You, the lion's part. And I hope here is a play fitted. Have you the lion's part written? Pray you, if it be, give it to me, for I am very slow of study. You may do it extant for, which is nothing but roaring. Oh, let me play the lion too. I will roar that I will do any man's heart good to hear me. I will roar that I will make the Duke say, let him roar again, let him roar again. And you should do it too terribly. You will fright the Dutchess and the ladies, and they would shriek, and that would be enough to hang us all. Hang us all, every mother's son. His love seek a place to fight. He therefore, Robin, overcast the night. The starry welkin cover thou and on, with drooping fog as black as Archeron. As to lead these testy rivals so astray, as one come not within another's way. Like to Lysander sometime frame thy tongue, and stir Demetrius up with bitter wrong. And sometime rail thou like Demetrius, and from each other look thou lead them thus. Till over their brows death counterfeiting sleep With leaden legs and batty wings doth creep. Then crush this herd into Lysander's eye, Whose liquor hath this virtuous property, To take from thence all error with his might, To make his eyeballs roll with wanted sight. When they're in the way, when it's 
to a dream through this vision. Come back to Athens to tell the lovers when this day till death shall never end. Was I misled to be employed? I'll to my queen and beg her Indian boy. And then I will have time with irony from monstrous views and all things shall be healed. My fairy lord, this must be done with haste. For nice swift dragons cut the clouds off we are fast. And yonder shines are always harming them. At whose approach? One ghost wandering here and there. Troop home to churchyards, damned spirits all. But we are spirits of another sort. I, with the morning's love, have oft made sport. Like a forester, the groves may tread, even till the eastern gate of fiery red. But notwithstanding, make haste and no delay, for we may affect this business yet ere day. Here comes one. What well, art thou, proud Demetrius? Speak thou now. Be a good tour and ready for Arthur. I'll be with thee straight. Follow me then, go to the road. Lysander, speak again. Thou run away, thou coward. <laughs> Art thou fled? L speak, in some bush, where doth thou hide thy head? Yea, art thou there? He goes before me, yet still he dares me off. When I go where he calls, then he is gone. A villain is much lighter heel than I. I followed fast, but faster did he fly. I've fallen in dark and uneven way. I'll rest now for thy gentle day. But for once, when it shows thy grey light, I'll find Demetrius, revenge and spite. Ah, oh, abide me if thou darest, for well I wot, thou runnest before me, shifting every place, and darest not stand, nor look me in the face. Where art thou now? I'm here, I'm here. Nay then, thou mockest me. But if ever I thy face by daylight see, now go thy way. Faint less constraint of me to measure up my level in this cold bed. By day's approach, not to be visited. A weary night, a long and tedious night, I break thy hour shine come but from the east. And let me lay a while. Yet but three, come one more. Two of both kinds makes up four. Here she comes, cursed and sad. Cupid is a knavish lad. Thus to make the poor females mad. Never so weary, never so low. I can call no further, no further I go. I will lay me down here till the break of day. Let the heavens shield my sander, if they be. When thou wakest, thou takest true delight in the sight of thy former lady's eye, and the country proverb known, that every man shall take his own, in your waking shall be shown, and all shall be well. Mm.